making their thoughts available for scrutiny and giving them a scratch pad. Sharing experience is tremendously important for developing social skills and language. Researchers have found that autistic children and children with very poor language begin to communicate their thoughts around a computer. Mario, in particular, has begun to spin a lot of language around what he does on the screen, even when it doesn't look very interesting to us. He has been developing stories, picking up words that we've interjected, and it gives him a medium that he's interested in that allows him to, to develop more language. His work has developed rapidly from a few scratchy designs using simple commands. This is an example of Mario's very earliest work. He called this one, I think it was, a square, and this one a fish, and this one a circle. There wasn't much planning involved here, and we weren't really sure that he had anything in mind when he was doing them. Now, in contrast, as he moved along, he began to use other recognizably different elements in his work. Um, this was a set of stairs that he had a great deal of difficulty making. He couldn't get the turtle to turn in the right direction. And shortly after that, he made a picture with more of a plan in mind. And this is his house. And here, this is a drawing that is very different from that early work. It shows symmetry. It shows sides of things with the same measure. Um, he had to move from here into here to get the door in the right place, and then the doorknob, which is that little line right there. And he's using much more of the screen, and this took maybe 40 or 50 commands to complete. So that was a process that took a great deal more concentration than what he had been doing before this. Older severely handicapped pupils were so intrigued by the computers that they found their own ways of manipulating the keyboard. The screen is a sketch pad where they can experiment with symmetry and perspective. I'm going to be taking a right turn, 45. I guess not. I'm going to be taking a left turn now. Maybe 20. Well, I have a doghouse on one side. I have trees on both sides. I have a house in the middle. And that's all I got so far. It's easier than drawing it. That's why I like about it. MIT project leader Sylvia Weir explains the prime importance of computers for learning. The individual concern is absolutely in control. And that makes a very important difference to the amount of learning that takes place. There's a cognitive as well as an emotional reason for this, because when you are actively thinking up the solution to a problem, all the mental schemes come to the front of your mind into working memory, as it were. And that allows them to be scrutinized and altered. In fact, real learning can take place when you're actively in control. For the physically handicapped student, this becomes even more important because of the dependent passive kind of life that such a motorically restricted person has led. Here for the first time, they can become active and take control and actually make a difference to their environment. And this has a very powerful effect on their self-image, on their view, on their sense of what they are. The spirit of Logo is to produce a language that encourages an attitude of taking it and changing it, shaping it to, to yourself. That is true of the individual, it's also true of cultures. And this is where I see a hope for a different kind of relationship between, between cultures. For Papert, knowledge is like a commodity which can be exchanged in a marketplace. Science is often prepackaged for export like goods in a supermarket, without the trading and negotiation of the West African market. It may seem hopelessly romantic, 
But Papert believes that the computer makes transmission of science and technology more plausible, less compromising. Logo classes at the École Normale Supérieure are part of a Senegalese government project. But does it make sense for an African country to experiment with giving children computers? I believe that computers can succeed here where all other media have failed miserably. They offer a way out of the vicious circle of scientific weakness in a culture breeding scientific weakness in the next generation. I've watched these children become involved with computers with the same ease and the same difficulties as in London or New York or Paris. These students are using French logo, but their drawing reflects the Senegalese countryside around them. The village scene is captured by two teachers on the project. They've used Logo to make a micro-world in which a national language, Wolof, is used to communicate with the computer. Today is the first time the children have seen it. Cards help them identify objects by names already programmed. Nit is the Wolof word for man, and typing it produces a man on the screen. Other commands in Wolof make the man walk. <laughs> now they've found a horse. Soon it's hoped that the children will create and name their own objects and make their own micro-worlds. Creating micro-worlds and using your natural language is one way of making Logo your own. So when the Senegalese take it over, the language will have a different structure from English or French. The next step will be to go beyond translating word by word into reconceptualizing, thinking of different command structures and different things to do with it that come naturally out of their culture, the structure of their language, to the way they think about graphics and shapes and sounds and everything. So developing nations can talk turtle in their own language. They can take and shape computer technology to their needs, using it to solve their own problems in industry and economy without the disruptive effects usually associated with development. And computers will also help them in communication with technologically more advanced states. of the Lamplighter School, Dallas, is a child is not a vessel to be filled, but a lamp to be lighted. These youngsters attend a school which has the highest concentration of computers anywhere. A richly endowed private school of 300 pupils, it has at least one computer for every five children. The high density of computers allows children to create their own computer culture. They experiment freely. On one great occasion, there was even a conspiracy among first graders. It led to cracking the code of knowledge teachers had decided was beyond their stage of development. Discoveries are made and spread through a grapevine. Everyone gets to know which kids know neat tricks. Jack is using numbers to call up strikes, objects in the logo microwave. Well, what's going on now? What's the seven? Tell, I'm telling Sprite 7 to carry the um, ghost. Carry 7 ghost. Got set colors. Tell 7, set color 6, which takes...